It's probably not the most popular claim to make, but I'm a tale tell. Yep, I was that kid. Mom! Luca bit Dolly's head off, and he found $10 in your handbag. Mom! Samantha wrote, I hate Selena on the dining table with a knife. I learned early on that if you don't tell your story, someone else will. And I still am a tale teller, tale teller. Uh, my name is, after all, Selena Tusitala Marsh. And Tusitala is the Samoan word for tale teller, storyteller or story writer. It was my grandfather's name. And he, in turn, was named after the great Scottish writer Robert Louis Stevenson, who lived and died his last years in Samoa. Author of such great tales as Treasure Island, Kidnapped, and the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Stevenson also wrote in support of a Samoan independence move away from a New Zealand colonial administration. And for his writing, Samoan chiefs bestowed on him the title Tusitala, teller of tales. I tell tales very different from that in the Western canon of literature. I tell of buried, stolen, silenced tales from colonized peoples because we know that if we don't tell our story, someone else will. I am, after all, Tusitala, teller of tales that I never heard till yesterday, born away for another life. Today, the tale I tell is theirs and yours, a way of seeking some more of Sa more of my sacred center. Today the tale I tell will book its way through tongued histories, sanctioned mysteries, spaces of silence, timeless lives. Tala Tusi, tell the book, word the spirit of brown in theory and creativity we make our sound renown. I'd written that poem almost two decades ago, and I was on my way to my first international conference. And I began to suspect that that sinking, nauseous feeling in the pit of my stomach was due to more than United Airlines food. <laughs> Their definition of vegetarian lasagna, for example. I mean, never mind about ideas worth spreading. How about some cheesecake worth spreading? How about some cheesecake you can actually not break your fork into? I learned early on at university, being one of very few brown faces, let alone being a woman, that if I didn't tell my story, someone else would. There's a story going on about this nation. And a few years ago, I was invited to take part in a national debate. And the moot was, Australia is the lucky country. So in my response, I began with the first story of this nation, because inevitably, all our stories return to that story. New Zealand is the lucky country. Aotearoa, land of divine poetry, where Papa Tua Nuku and Rangi, lovers of land, sky, and sea, progenitors of Māori. Yes, New Zealand's a lucky country. Lucky the brothers were restless sons, Lucky they warred when dark had won. 
Lucky they longed for the light of the sun and the warmth of the open air. Lucky Tane was the heart-led son, seeking bloodless revolution. Lucky he had the strength to stand and pry his parents apart. Lucky the lovers loved so much, missing the caress of each other's touch. For Rangi cries tears from the sky so freely, and papa's thick in soil so healing, giving us Tane Mahuta's forests of jade green, rivers, lakes, underground springs, a green belt round this nation's hips, kissed all over by Moana's blue lips. From Te Waipaunamu to Te Ika a Maui, green stone to fishtail, lucky, lucky country. See the Pahutakawa blush deeply along cliff edges rising steeply where the dead depart for Hawaii. From Cape Rianga to Raki Urusi, yes, New Zealand's a lucky country. If you're not tangata whenua, you're tangata te riti, whether British, South African, or Somali, Chinese, Indian, or Israeli, we've got the diversity. No ethnic cleansing policy. Well, except for maybe 1833, that infected blanket strategy. Britain's manifest destiny taking land by any means necessary. Platform for Māori fighting land wars, for shores, bastion pointing the way to all blessed Teriti or Waitangi, setting a fire in your belly against paternalistic tyranny. Just do it said Sir T. Penny, and way before Nike. <laughs> New Zealand's a lucky country, this land home to migrant Tau Iwi, from Wellington's 1858 Gujarati, to Albert Wentz flying fox in a freedom tree, John Pule's tapa talk canvas 10 metres by three, where 250,000 at Western Springs drink deep from the well, Hear them sing. Kiribati, Fijians, Rotumans, Samoans, Tongans, Cook Islanders, New Zealand borns, and the fusion from Nui to Scottish Highlanders makes Fijongans, Raramoans, and Pakeha Islanders. We had our Muldoon, but he was no Mugabe. We're fourth in the world with the least political conspiracy. We wear our slogan T-shirts freely in Queen Street, I see. Politicians are the same all over. They promise a bridge when there is no river. <laughs> and this one in Taupo, down by the lake. In New Zealand, anyone can be Prime Minister. It's a risk you take. <laughs> New Zealand's a lucky country when our birthright civic duty lets you vote or not. It's free. There's no one purple finger vote. No machete held at your family's throat. No AK-47 to persuade you at the polls. No standing in the dust waving the same flag as the presidential rolls. New Zealand's a lucky country where inconvenient geography, no landlocked topography, we're far but close enough to see our dairy economy makes the milk in this land of honey. Kiwi Shakespeare sharing farming families, gumboot brigading, black singlet parading, number eight wire mentality in enterprise and industry. It's Fred Dagg haggling in the city. And we've got water 
like no other. Wind turbines and solar power and Antarctica. Terra Australis Incognita, our polar explorers, our global heroes. It's a land of opportunity, hard work meeting, synchronicity, where we can still think differently because we're Te Moana Nui a Kiwis, Kiwis. Tōtara Waka Park next to chromed Humvee, Vespa next to Uncle's souped-up taxi, where beaching beauty is for free. Rachel Hunter tip-topping, jandals flip-lopping, bare feet lapping the sea under our holy ozone CV. Brotown cartooning our TV, eagle versus shark mentality, Jim Baxter's Jerusaluming it in Ponsonby, Sam Hunt's DB Bitter Poetry, Catherine Mansfield's Devonshire scones over a cup of tea. Yes, New Zealand's a lucky country. We're a plucky country. Queen Street busking, husking for money, where you can still buy KFC and MDs next to pork bones, puha and balusami, swirling Indian curries, Korean walking, no MSG, <laughs> in Otara's free market of inclusivity. Yes, New Zealand's a lucky country. But like Sir Tipene and Sir Paul Reeves, we've got to horizon seek. Otherwise, it's good night, Kiwi. And everything we think is free lies hostage to a world economy. We need intergenerationality, eco sustainability for our fossil fuels and energy in the space of land, water, and sea. We need a bit of Sir Ed Hillary, who had the same fear of heights as you and me, but knocked the bastard off anyway. Yes, New Zealand's a lucky, 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 lucky country. If we're not telling our story, be assured, someone is. Thank you.